This is HuffPost Live. I'm Dina Takuri. It's midsummer, but college football fans are already counting down the days until the last Saturday in August when LSU takes on TCU and Clemson faces off with Georgia. But not everyone will be celebrating the start of a new season. Malcolm Gladwell and Bud, Buzz Bissinger, two high profile journalists, have called for banning college football, citing health concerns, high costs, and low benefits to the student body. Now, while this proposal may start riots on certain college campuses, is there something to the idea? Should we consider a ban on college football? Joining me in the Hangout to discuss this is Keith McCants, an All-American lineback from the University of Alabama and first-round in the NFL uh, first-round NFL draft pick. And we also have Stephen Muma, a writer at SB Nation. Here on set with me is Jordan Schultz. Of course, he's a HuffPost sports columnist. And joining us over the phone right now is Eric Crouch, the 2001 Heisman Trophy winning quarterback from the University of Nebraska. Gentlemen, thank you so much for having uh, this conversation for joining me. Um, but before we begin, let's take a look at Malcolm Gladwell making his case on Fareed Zakaria on CNN just this past Sunday. There is all of this, I think, powerfully suggestive evidence that some portion of football players are going to come down with a, uh, a, a, a serious degenerative uh, neurological disorder known as CTE, which is directly the consequence of being hit in the head repeatedly over the course of, of, of playing football. And at a certain point, you have to ask yourself as a fan or as anyone who is in any way connected to football, um, is, that, uh, is it appropriate in the modern day and age for us to support and participate in a game that has such a serious risk of physical harm to its players? Eric, there you have it. You have a connection to football indeed. What do you think of Malcolm's argument? Well, I disagree with it completely. I, I, I understand that he's saying that there is bodily injury when playing the sport, but there's nobody holding a gun to any football player's head saying you have to play football. I mean, I, I believe that it's, a, it's the greatest sport in the world. Um, I think it's a, a platform to learn quality life values. It's a very competitive sport. And people love watching the game of football. I don't think you can ask any fan, and they're going to be disappointed with watching their favorite team come Saturday afternoon. Uh, uh, Stephen, let me ask you this, because the reality is it is a violent sport. You have players whose heads are colliding. The damage that they suffer to their brains is known. It's increasingly being documented. You actually looked at this. You highlighted a recent study in one of your articles. Uh, what were the most surprising findings that you saw? I think... One of the things that we've learned that's more interesting is that is the sub-concussive hits. Uh, Gladwell touched on this. It's not just the big hits that cause concussions that ultimately can lead to brain damage. It's every hit that you take is has a cumulative effect. So there's essentially no avoiding it whatsoever if you play football. Yeah, I mean, Keith, you did play football, and you're no stranger to blows um, to the head. You've talked about the number of concussions that you've had in the past. First of all, just tell us, how is your health right now? Uh, uh, I, I do suffer from the concussion. I have six of them, and I understand what both parties are talking about, and it does have some pluses and minus. And at the same time, it's that you're right. Don't nobody hold a gun to our head to play. We do it because we we, we love the sport. We all family would bred bred us on football. It's an American favorite, and we go out there and we play you, and we and we play hard. But if the NCAA think they're going to change the game. Now, they, 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 that's not going to happen because you'll take away from the sport. And it's a great sport. But at the same time, I got mixed feelings about it at the same time. Collegiate football get, makes more money than the National Football League. And if you think the NCAA is going to sit back and, and, and allow anybody to mess tamper with that, you get, you're saying they're mistaken. But what they should do, in my opinion, is they should have a health care plan, to develop a health care plan for these players. That, that end up with, with um, degenerate diseases, such as bone disease or concussions, because they hit just as hard as the NFL players. A lot of things go on there. Concussions are caused. Players get hurt in the, uh, in the end of their career out there. And, yeah, they, you, know, you get an education. You get, you, it's up to you to get your education. But what good is an education that's going to do you if you can't even be, comprehend a lot of things? I did excellent. I did really well at, 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 in college. But uh, today, right now, I have trouble. I, I have trouble reading the language. Because it's not that I'm dumb or illiterate. It's just that I get confused. 
I have to call the police sometimes to, to, to get me to to, 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 to take me uh, to, to get me to come come home. Uh, and, the, and that is a result of the uh, repeated concussions that you had. Yes, no, no doubt about it. I have a friend. Um, uh, I don't call his name. He's running back to Tampa Bay with me. I went to see him. He has several concussions. He's a running back. They put a steel plate, they did something to his brain, put a steel plate in it. And when he, I was with him the other day, and it started raining, and he started hollering and screaming and putting his hand over his head. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, the rain is hitting my brain. I broke down, man. I said, if you're talking about something that was sad, it was sad. And he ain't the only one out there like that. I thought I was bad until I saw him. Wow. He said, they got a, um, I, I, I can't call his name. Uh, what is that guy's name? Well, he's the, um, I can't call his name at this particular time. But just to see that and then see, these are the things that the fans don't see. Exactly. And these are the points that Malcolm Gladwell is trying to make. Jordan, I want to go to you because I know you, like so many other people, when you hear Malcolm Gladwell's proposal to kill college football, you kind of roll your eyes and you think, I mean, it is quite radical. But there's something to what he's saying. And, and I wonder if these you know, high schoolers who are about to enter college and play college football there, are they thinking about the health risks? Are they thinking about the permanent brain damage that they might suffer that they might not know about until they're about 30 or 40 years old? I would say no to that. Um, when you get a scholarship and when you're a marquee recruit getting scholarship to play, Big time college football, that is the least of your worries. I, I will say this, um, Gladwell's point, while well taken, because he, he is a great literary mind and, and he's a terrific writer and I understand what he's saying, but to what Keith said and what Eric said, financially and economically, the NCAA profits, just consider this, in Division One football last year, there was a, it was a $10 billion industry. When you have every single, all, all 10 FCS, uh, major conferences are all tied up in long-term deals with television. So th there's really not, the only thing that you can do, and, and I think the NCAA has tried to over-legislate this, which, which is a positive, is to make safety changes to the game. Uh, whether it's the safe catch zone and increasing the penalty, uh, whether it's potentially taking off kickoffs or moving off moving kick kickoffs back, because that's a big part of concussions. And that's what the NCAA did, and the NFL followed suit the, a year later. So there are steps being taken, but at some point, you can't take football out of football, and that's, I think, the biggest problem. The last point I'll make, Dina, is that right now, the NCAA, just a few days ago, installed a new rule, hit rule, where you cannot... Uh, hit aim for the head, and there was a, a very great. There was a great hit last year made by Jadavion Clowney in a, in a bowl game that was a totally clean hit that people are saying now that would have ejected him out of the game. At some point this season, somebody's going to get ejected. It's going to be a big controversy. There's only so much you can do. Wow. Well, I now, think they're going to be ejecting guys left and right this year. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. But uh, hold on, hold on a second. That, okay. It, it, I, I, I don't know how many people have done studying on concussions because I have had them. You know what? You don't have to have a hit to the head. The ground can cause a concussion. The body, the, the, the impact of a body can cause, cause a concussion. Anytime you get hit so hard and the, and the body jerks and the brain shifts if it comes detached from the skull, is known as a concussion. Eric, so you can't take that away from football. Right. Eric, talk Absolutely. to me a little bit about the game. You're obviously a very celebrated um, American college football star. In that moment when you're playing and you're colliding with another, you know, with an opponent and your heads bang, uh, what are you thinking? And at any point after that moment, do you ever question if it in fact is worth it? I'm, I'm like this. As a, star, as, as a player, as a star player, uh, 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 line, I play linebacker. That's a quarterback of the defense. I'm going to tell you, when I was in college, I wanted people to fear me. I'm on, I, I would let people catch the ball so I can hit them, so I couldn't put them out of the game, so I couldn't sit them down that second. I want to put that C in them because that's my mentality as a football player, as a linebacker. When I came out of college, I was the number one in the world, and that's what made me number one. I had the speed. I had the ability. I had everything to do the things that was right. But later in life, I hit people so hard that I gave my own self concussions. So what I'm trying to tell you is that if you do anything to offer that, you're taking away from the game. If you're taking away from the game, you're cheating the fans. You're cheating the people that came to play, see you play. We know more than gladiators out there. But later in life, just, uh, what is this guy's name? I can't think of his name. Uh, but later in life, you don't want to be like this man, shooting himself from the rain, thinking the brain, thinking that the rain doesn't hit him in the head. 
Absolutely. Eric, as someone who played in the game over the phone, I just want you to, uh, to have a chance to respond to that as well. Well, I, I really completely agree with what Keith said earlier. I, I think the, the legislation with the NCAA, you know, they're looking at safety, which is a great thing, but they need to look at how to protect the player. And I was just talking about this yesterday. I'm, I'm actually really glad that you mentioned it. Instead of paying the players, why don't they take that money and put it in an account and, and let them have health insurance for the rest of their lives? Exactly. Because I am 34 years old right now. I've had 11 surgeries from playing football, and I'm having a tough time getting health insurance. And I'm 34, and I, and I feel relatively healthy. But because of my past and because of playing football for the University of Nebraska, and professionally for five different teams, I'm struggling right now to try to find health care. And it's not just a matter of health insurance after the fact, right? A lot of people are making the case that these college football players should be paid to start out with. What do you think about that? Well, I think, I think getting paid is something different. I, I don't know that you know, $3,000 or $5,000 is going to make a huge difference in paying the players. I think they have to look at the free education that they're getting and, and look at that as a value because – you know, what is valued, is an education or, you know, $3,000 a year, or can you take that $3,000 and put it in an account to where, you know, when you're 23, you'll take the $3,000 now. But when you're 33, you wish you would have put that $3,000 in an account and have health insurance the rest of your life. Yeah, you can take out health insurance as a player in college. A lot of guys don't do it. In fact, it's very rare, uh, especially in football, and you would think it should be more common. But that's something you can do. Uh, you want to talk about pay paying athletes, that's fine. But the number one priority, if the NCAA is serious, protecting its athletes, I think health insurance is a great option. It, it doesn't alleviate the injuries, but it certainly will cover you later in life. Mm -hmm. I want to take it back. I agree. Oh, okay. I, I, I agree. I, I'm sorry. I agree with you guys. There's a 100% about that. But do you have any idea how much money the, the NCAA college football made all over the country? I'm telling you, it, it, it got, it got, it got, it have to, I had to do a study when I was in college, and I forgot all the numbers, but it got to be a big by a landslide. Who is, where is this money going to? It would not hurt them to set up and make it mandatory that each, each individual on that team have some kind of health care or able to see a doctor for the, to, for, the, for the rest of their life, especially the active players. Because you played in so so many games, okay, and you reach the you reach the requirements, of it, oh, so they 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 they're able to have health care. The National Football League should do it, but it's gonna cost them a little money, so they won't want to do it. It's gonna open up a landslide, so they they wouldn't want to do it. It's gonna open up, you know, what I'm saying, and that will that will prevent so many problems. You can't see you get hurt in college, you can't sue them. I want to take a look again at one of the points that uh, Malcolm Gladwell made recently when he compared the Michael Vick dogfighting scandal to the sport of football. Let's take a look at that. I was just struck at the time by the unbelievable hypocrisy of people in football, for goodness sake, getting up in arms about someone who, would, who chose to fight dogs, to put, pit one dog against each other. In what way is dogfighting any different from football on a certain level, right? I mean... You take a, uh, a young, vulnerable dog who was made vulnerable because of his allegiance to the owner, and you ask him to engage in serious, sustained physical combat with another dog under the control of another owner, right? Well, what's football? We take young, take young boys, essentially, and we have them repeatedly over the course of the season smash each other in the head, right? With known neurological consequences. And why do they do that? Out of an allegiance to their owners and their coaches and a feeling they're participating in some grand American spec spectacle. They're the same thing. Keith, are they the same thing? No doubt. They're exactly the same thing. We, I'm going to tell you something. I, I don't know who agree with me don't agree. I don't even care. But I'm going to tell you something. I was trained. I was bred. Not just, not, just, not just in college. From when I was a little kid. It's a contact. contact. Hit people, make them pay for it, hurt them. I'm gonna tell you, when you got a, when we, we, for example, you going to get some Michael Vick, a Randall Cunningham, or uh, 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 Dan Marino, or John Elway. If you get a chance to put them out the game, and believe me, they, we talk about boundaries at one point in time, they do exist. Every time you got a quarterback that's a, that's a threat, like those guys, you got a bounty on you. Even today, I'm living proof. I was part of it. 
Yeah. And I'm going to put you out of the game. And the best way to put you out of the game is I mean, it's just just a technique I can show you to, to give you concussion and to break your shoulder at the same time. I'm a master of it. Eric, how did you feel about that analogy, dog fighting the football playing? Both of them are loyal to their, you know, managers or owners. Well, I, I understand the comparison, I do, and I, I, it is a violent game. That's what, what football is all about. It's about being trained from a very young age to come out and be the most physical, dominating player on the team. And it's about causing the person pain. And, and, and from the old school, and I'm sure that that's where we're coming from, is we were trained that way. I was an option quarterback. I was trained to deliver a blow running the football, try to hurt the person that I ran into so they would back off and we would have a chance to ultimately win the football game. Football is a very competitive sport, and when you can get an upper hand by hurting a player, um, by hitting them hard, by getting in their psyche, by knocking them out, hitting them in the chin, coming after them play after play after play until they give up, you ultimately win. It's a competitive game, and at the end of the day, it's about wins and losses, and that's how players win. They, they dominate the game physically and take control that way. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, Eric, I mean, Eric's a great example because he was an option quarterback. Eric, I saw you play many times throughout your college career. Whenever you carried the ball, Eric, there was a consistent theme. You were, you were a running back on that pitch, and you know, a lot of quarterbacks don't have to go through that. You obviously did that in Nebraska. My question to you is this. Having looked back on that, did you ever think during your time there, when you were running that, that option so successfully, you're taking those hits, but did you ever think about it that each, each play could potentially have a negative effect down the road? I mean, is that something you ever think about? It never crossed my mind. I, honestly, I knew that at the time, the technology that we had on our, on our heads, helmets, pads, shoulder pads, you were told no fear. That's what the pads are for. Now, go play the game. It was very simple and direct. Now, could you get injured? Yes, you could. But like Keith said, it's not a direct blow on the helmet that's always going to give you a concussion. You could get chopped out from under your ankles and hit your head and get a concussion. You get hit in the hip and have a whiplash from your head and cause a concussion. So that's the sport that you decide to play. You choose to play this game. And I think that the NCAA is looking at it in the wrong way as far as the targeting, a defenseless player. I understand that, that looking towards safety is what they're trying to do. But there's going to be a real gray area here that's really going to affect the outcome and longevity of college football or football down the road as we watch it and as we know it. Most definitely. We actually got a wrap soon, but I think it's worth pointing out that a few months ago, President Obama actually said that if he had a son, he probably wouldn't let him play football because of how violent the sport is and that it'll probably be changing in time, football, that is. Um, but before we go, you know, I want to just toss it back to the community and give them their say because we asked on Twitter and in our, uh, on our HuffPost Live comments, well, should we ban college football? And these are some of the responses we got. No. No. Are you crazy? Uh, no, this is stupid. No college football. Who's going to play in the NFL? And then Lamar Johnson says it shouldn't be banned. The people need to see college football and the, st and the students live for it. And finally, we have a comment from Brian Sharp who says college football needs to leave the NCAA. And because it's own sanction, it, it also helps uh, in making Title IX more fair. So uh, there you have it. Thank you so much for joining this conversation, Jordan, Eric, Keith, and Steven. This is HuffPost Live, and the conversation will continue.